if you look at the history of the Philippine stock market, every time there's a deep decline, you see a substantial increase in the following years. I think that should give you some level of comfort that second quarter GDP is just temporary and it's an opportunity for you to invest. Hi everyone, we're in for another special treat today because in this video, we have the Investment and Research Head of First Metro Asset Management, Edzer Trinidad, who has over 20 plus years of experience in the financial market. So this is very, very exciting because we get to glean not just on his expertise and strategy, but also on his depth of experience in the markets. So Mr. Trinidad, hello to you. How are you and your family in light of all of this uh, new normal that we're having? We're happy to say that we've uh, adapted quite well in this environment. We're able to still enjoy some sense of uh, normalcy. I'm excited for this interview no, because you're one of the most prolific also in the industry. Your colleagues have spoken so much good things about you. That's why as we oh. <laughs> drill into the markets, I, I want to hear your insights. So my first question is this. By the time we're making this video, the index has gone up to around 6,500, around that level from an industry yes, yes, low yes. of 4,000. Do you think this is something that will proceed further or it's just something based on sentiment from the GCQ. A bit of everything. On the other side, there's basically maybe a positive outlook because we're slowly opening our economy. Some pessimists also see this as more of an irrational exuberance, but basically because of the lockdown, corporate earnings may slow down by second quarter and third quarter. So there's possibility that uh, the sentiment may not be sustainable. I expect that there should be some volatility that will continue to happen. However, there's some glimmer of hope because first of all, if you look at the U.S. market, the U.S. market um, had been robust despite of uh, what's happening in their domestic market. I think what's driving that is if you are going to look at the new jobs, considering that they just reopened their market in a couple of weeks and they've recorded a healthy jump in new employment. Here in the Philippines, unfortunately, we also experienced that kind of uh, jump in unemployment rate. But there's a semblance of some fundamental reason why the market had uh, also enjoyed a strong run, but also basic Islam sentiment because of uh, some signs uh, which also can also be used uh, as a good template. The biggest problem with investors naman is this. Hmm. No, no March, when the market was dropping, everyone was so scared. But at that time, it was so cheap. Now we've gone up quite a bit already. The biggest hesitation yeah. of people is, baka mahal na, it might go down further. What's your advice for people naman who have extra money and then their time horizon is still very, very long? Should they wait? Or is it still a good time no, given that we're somehow in the middle, 9,000 uh, all-time high in 2018 yeah. versus the, the drop that we had in March where parang mm. people are hesitating. It's not at its lowest, but it's not yet at its highest. What should they do? Every time that there's a sign that the market will correct, that's a good sign to enter the market. But don't put your eggs in one basket. So you have to invest in tranches. So at least you'll be able to capture the volatility. Sometimes you know, investment, volatility is your friend. For retailers who have either salary or they have a lump sum, uh, how do you mm. suggest they tranche it? Do they split it into two? Do they split it into three? And then what could be their signals that it dropped now? So I put this first tranche in. What's a good way for them to do it? Divide them into four. Mm. I think that's the best strategy. Don't divide it by two. Okay, okay. Because it's like a 50-50 chance. Let's say if the market um, had a correction, so you start to buy. But after that, the following day, oh, it, uh, the market went down. Just take a pause. Let's wait. As an investor, you have to wait. And when you feel that the market has already reached its bottom, then invest again. So in a way, you'll be able to average down your costs. So let's say all of a sudden, the following day, it went up, okay? And again, let's wait for a number of days. Do not panic, uh, don't, you know, don't join the bandwagon. Just look at the news, what's happening, what is the reason why the market is up. When you see that the market's uh, rebound was basically due to 
some positive developments, then it may also signal that for you to buy, because there's a reason why the market is going up, the investor is now well educated and well informed that can assist him or her is or her decision. Just to be clear with that, when you say four tranches, do you equally weight it or mas madami sa una or mas madami sa huli? It's your call. If you feel that the market dropped uh, substantially, okay, from where you last invested, and you feel that uh, the drop can equally um, experience a sudden uptick, then you can also maybe increase your allocation for that purchase. In my opinion, a family is one of the most respected funds in the Philippines. And how do you, as fund managers, uh, nitpick no and select? stocks that you have for individual stock investors the biggest question that they would normally ask is out of 200 stocks parang it's so hard to filter everything yes. and you guys as mm. fund managers you give an edge to people who are not really investing in the market yeah, just first look at our experience uh, on my end um i have more than 20 years experience uh, looking at the market so Shortly, I've already experienced everything, um, all cycles. My first experience uh, for this financial crisis during 1997, we have uh, the global financial crisis in 2007, 2010. Second, on how we analyze the market. On our case, we do a top-down approach. Mm -hmm. We first look at not only the uh, macro uh, environment, but also the global economy. Because right now, things have changed. While admittedly, a big portion of our economy is still domestic uh, driven, but our stock market is also being affected by global events. And then we see through which are the companies that should benefit from that. Mm -hmm. So basically it's, it's a disciplined approach on how we invest our clients' money. When you start drilling, for example, you say that, mm, I, I think the banking sector will do very, very well. Uh, do you just pick three banks, four banks, and then you disregard the rest? or uh, you pick the ones with the highest growth or you pick the ones with the highest dividends, uh, you pick the ones that are more mature that gives you stability? Certainly, we look at the, the numbers. We look at the loan growth, how do they manage their expenses with having the, the biggest or the better margins. And then after that, we look also at, look at the valuation, whether it trades at a discount or at a premium relative to its peers and also relative to their historical value. Now, in terms of, you know, do we need to focus more on the uh, three big companies? It all depends on certain criteria. First, it also has to meet our criteria on liquidity. As a fund, we would like to invest our clients' money to companies that are liquid. If we do not consider that as a criteria, then it is also very hard, let's say, for us to either buy the stock or to sell the stock. As fund managers, what do you put a larger preference on? Do you want something that's really, really cheap? Or do you want something that's at a premium but will give you bigger growth? It all depends eh. First, it looks expensive. Okay, however, the expensive valuation may be justified because of their market share, because of the strategy that they're employing, which means that they'll be able to enjoy higher than average returns on their investment. If those criteria will be met, then we're not hesitant uh, to buy or to invest in that company. But uh, as much as possible, we also would like to look at the companies that are maybe undervalued. Okay, okay, while uh, that company may not be able to sustain, will not be able to generate the same returns, let's say, as Bank A. But Bank B, the disparity in terms of, uh, let's say, the margins is not that great, but in terms of valuation, the disparity is really big, then we might also uh, look at uh, Bank B. I'm interested also that you said you were in the markets for a very, very long time. How different is this crash? How different is this crisis? And the golden question is, how will we recover V-shape, W-shape, U-shape in all of this? And if you have an expectation that, oh, by 2020, 2021, we will be back at this level already. I think we may be doing, looking at the U-shape recovery because uh, admittedly, this crisis is unprecedented. As compared to the past crisis, not one single country has been spared. The global financial crisis, it affected the U.S. to some extent, some European countries. 
but our economy wasn't affected. About 70, 60, 70 percent of our economy is being driven by consumption. If household consumption in terms of consumer confidence will recover much faster, then our economy should also bounce back faster than what we had expected. I'm a very, very big fan of the Philippines' consumption-driven economy. When times were good, it was so predictable because as long as you know Filipinos were spending, regardless of what's happening around the world, uh, some of the businesses here will thrive. And now, that's what's being threatened. And the reason why I'm asking that is Tammy has a consumer fund also, which comprises a lot of great brands that are in the Philippines. My question on top of that is this. Is it still okay to buy stocks connected to consumption or even the consumer fund based on what's happening right now? The answer to that, yes. Because first of all, in terms of our fund, we are invested in, are basically have a good track record and enjoy a sizable market share. Basically, these companies can easily weather the storm. Um, in terms of consumption, yes. Um, our consumption may be, have been affected by this pandemic and to some extent in the short run because of concern that the OFW remittances might slow down because there's a basically a big number of our clients that have lost their jobs abroad. I am quite confident that consumption can recover. We have a very positive outlook. As long as the government would provide enough incentive, enough signs that the economy will do well, then consumer confidence can easily bounce back. First of all, our Kababayans are one of the most sought after workers abroad. Second, we might be looking at a structural change in terms of the demand for workers abroad. Because of this pandemic, uh, we may be seeing an increase in the demand for persons in the medical services. You know, we might be losing some jobs here on this one subsector. We may also be gaining jobs on the other sector. For people who want exposure on equities, for people who want exposure on a fund in particular, what is the biggest edge that you guys have compared to normal investors that are picking stocks? This is our livelihood. We monitor the market practically almost 24 by 7. Uh, we can easily monitor, we can easily spot a trend, which is quite difficult for, let's say, an individual investor who doesn't have the time. Um, basically, we're also properly equipped contact with the companies. We have access to most of the management of the companies, so we can easily gauge whether this company is a, a worthwhile investment. You know, we don't automatically join the bandwagon. We have to really sift through and see the reason behind the run up on its share price. For people who want to do it on their own, what do you think is the biggest mistake that they can make if it's it's just them? The reason why I'm asking that is I want to protect also people's hard-earned money kasi pinaghirapan din naman yan, pinabaho yan. What are the things that can be prevented as compared to them doing it on their own and then as compared to giving it to someone who has the expertise to do it as well? An investor who doesn't have the time to look at the market on a daily basis, it is best for that investor to just go to a uh, mutual fund company and just invest there. Let the people like us do the investing for you. And for those that have the time to really look at the market closely, my advice is wag magpadala. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's happening or what's basic the stock has been moving up. Know the reason why the stock is going up. Before buying a certain tip that was given to you by a friend, better check whether the stock still has the legs to run by first looking at the chart. Second, you can go to the BSE website to look for corporate disclosures why the stock has been rising. Since there will be people who have their, they're running their own business, they have their own sources of income, and this is just an additional asset for them that will make money. Do you suggest that this is something that they can buy and hold for a very, very long time also? The reason why I'm asking that also, I want to double down that there's an expectation that the second quarter GDP will be worse than the first quarter GDP. With that hanging, the, the fear, the uncertainty of that, do you still recommend it that okay lang naman, a uh, long-term investor ka naman can still buy it even if there's fear around? Investing in, in this market is a long-term proposition. Now, if you are confident about our long-term outlook, then a bad second quarter GDP will not deter you investing because it's also be an opportunity for you 
to buy at a low level. And if you look at the history of the Philippine stock market, every time there's a deep decline, you see a substantial increase in the following years. I think that should give you some level of comfort that second quarter GDP is just temporary and it's an opportunity for you to invest. You mentioned that the long-term prospects of the Philippines are still intact. It's amazing. For normal investors, what are the things that they should look at also to, to figure out that ah, things are getting better already, uh, I, okay. I, I should not be as scared anymore? Uh, are there any parameters or signals that they can look at? First of all, look at the consumer confidence uh, that's being published by the BSP. So if you see uh, consumer confidence is improving, and that's a good, a good sign that our economy should also improve. Second. You also have to look at what are the bank's activities. If you see the bank's uh, loans have started to pick up, that means that a lot of businesses are now becoming more confident about the economy, and that's the reason why they're borrowing in order to expand their operations. Guys, please take note of all of this. Now, this these are very, very important uh, details for you to know. Please remember, when it comes to investing, the more you study also gives you competence and competence leads into confidence and if you're confident about something when everyone's scared it allows you to add and it allows you to buy and that's what we're doing right here the goal of this video is to give you as much information as possible so that you're not investing just because you want to make money you're not investing just because habol mo kumita ng pera but you're investing because you know it's something that you have studied by the way for everyone who wants to uh, start and open a mutual fund i'll put the link below i'll also put their number so that if you want Ed Sir Trinidad and Fami to manage your finances, to take care of your long-term growth, uh, you can sign up with them. There are a lot of people who may have lost money also, who have got hit, they experience the volatility. What's your word of advice for them? Iba yung pinag-uusapan natin the numbers get hit. Sana experience mo talaga to see your, your money also fall before your very eyes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, as I mentioned, no, um, some are have tears of joy <laughs> because they're, they're earning or some they're basically tears of sadness because they're losing money. This is basically the pitfall of some investors. You have to be a some sort of savvy enough that for every market decline, then it's an opportunity to buy. So those that have bought at a peak, now is the time to average down. So in a way, if the market recovers, then you'll be able to enjoy a game. I've been over a decade, palang, not, as long, not as long as you, but it always recovers, eh? it's cyclical. When, yes. when it starts yes. to go down, especially the index, it will always bounce back higher than where you were before, where it was before. Correct. That's why it's very, very important to those that are listening that you invest not just merely to make money, but you invest to meet your goals so that when may volatility, you will see that Ano ba yung goal ko? Why am I invested for it? Because if it will always be based on how much you could earn, there will be days talaga na magre-red yan. There will be days talaga that the markets will will go down. And as, as evidence on what we've talked about, there will be times like this where the economic information is not as good. But what I like about that is in times of uncertainty and in times of crisis, that's one of the best times for you also to position. That's one of the best times for you to do it. Kasi when everyone's scared, when everyone does not want to do it, that's the time for you to go also against the flow. Because if it was so easy, and if, if investing is so easy also, then everyone would be a billionaire. It's time that in times like this, it's time for you to allocate. That's why it's very, very important to put a small amount of money, or not a small amount, but something that you can tolerate, something that's an excess, something that you don't like to touch for a very, very long time. And that's what you start to allocate. I really believe this answer that investing works, eh? Investing works that as you're an entrepreneur, you're a business person, you're an employee, you allow yourself to have an extra asset class for you that will work hard for you. It allows you that in spite of the volatility, there's still a chance for you to earn extra. So the, the reason why I'm doing this also is, guys, so you see the people behind uh, the funds, you know, you see how, how they think, how they analyze, how they pick and select for you so that uh, the, the, the biggest tendency of a lot of people when they start investing and trading is, Ano eh? Uh, ano gagawin ko? Now you know how people behind the scenes decide so that you can put your trust also on the way they 
analyze na hindi lang siya numbers lang na kinukuha doon, hindi lang siya basta-basta company. It's something that's done methodically. It's something that's thought about very, very well. It's something that on good times, they will try to give you as much upside as possible. But on bad times, they will also try to edge you and protect you from the risk that's there. Because at the end of the day, when you invest, it's all about risk and reward. And that's what I believe fund managers are there for. They have a goal to invest, but they also want to protect your reward and at the same time also hedge you against the risk that's possible. So if you want to know more about First Metro Asset Management, the link is in the description, the numbers on how you can also get in touch with them. And I hope you do because at the end of the day, we've been making a lot of videos about this. If this is just purely information, sayang eh. I want you to execute. I want you to also start something so that uh, 10, 20, 30 years from now, you will look back at this time that Oh, nga pala, tama yung ginawa ko. That's one of the best decisions that I've ever made that I started to invest for myself. And I'll, I'll just end with this. I'd rather have the chance to lose money on an investment than buying something that I don't need. Kasi sure ako, yung bagay na hindi ko kailangan, 20 years from now, wala nang value yun eh. Pero an investment, although may chance that it will have volatility, it gives me a shot of appreciation in the long term. Think about the cell phones that you bought that ngayon wala nang value versus buying probably at a, a fund that owns a telco company that yung telco company na yun, just imagine the dividends and the appreciation would have given the fund already for you. So, that's it for now. Thank you so much, Ed Sir Trinidad and First, First Metro Asset Management. Thank you for joining us and to everyone, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon. God bless you all.